Welcome in to the holiday edition, I guess, for those of us in the United States. It's Independence Day, July 4th. Welcome to the Fun Astrology Podcast. We're still talking about the sky. You better believe it because there is something over our heads that was not there yesterday that came in overnight while you were asleep, and that is a great big yod in the chart. And this one is big, no kidding, because it's going to be in there all the way until August 2nd. This covers the whole month of July, and it covers a lot of chart real estate, too. So let's talk about this, and then probably we'll talk about the structure of July tomorrow. A lot going on here at the beginning of the month. But also on Old Soul, New Soul to complement this, and it really didn't work out this way. Well, it kind of did, but somebody sent in a listener question, and we talk about Yods in a two-part episode. The second part was released today. A lot of good information in there about quincunxes and Yods. So Yods are mysterious. They're a mystique. They are traditional. I don't know. There's just a lot of descriptors of Yods, and they seem to just hold this mysterious magic around them. Robert said, we've gotten too mysterious with these names. It's an aspect. It has two quincunxes and a sextile, and that's what it is. Well, let's pick it apart nonetheless. At the top of this yod, the focal point, the pinnacle planet, or planets in this case, the fiery conjunction of Venus and Mars in Leo. So let's just use the witch's hat visualization in our mind, and up at the top of the witch's hat, Venus and Mars, but fiery in Leo. And fiery indeed. I mean, we've been affected the past week here on the east coast of the United States by these fires. The air quality has literally been toxic poisonous. So I've had to stay inside. Not my style, man. (laughs) But I mean, you go out and you feel it in your chest, your throat. People are talking about migraines and headaches and all that. Fire. What about what's going on in Europe? Fire. That's at the top of this yacht. And it's going to be with us the whole month. This is why I'm kind of like, okay, we need to pay attention to this. Now, let's talk about the base of the witch's hat. So what two planets are down there? Well, one is Pluto, and which today happens to be conjoined by the moon. That will pass through quickly. But today you have Pluto and the moon on one side of this yod. Already we have four. Almost half of the chart is involved in this yod. Let's bring in the other side. That's Neptune which, of course, just went retrograde, and it's the second slowest mover, so it is still very, very powerful. So I'd rather ask you the question. You know, I sit here and contemplate and pontificate on what these things mean, and that's fine, but what did you just hear? Go ahead and shout it out. I'd love to hear your initial blink reaction. What did you hear when you think about fire at the top of a yod, Pluto and Neptune at the base of the yod, and the moon right there with it? What did you shout out? I'd love to know. (laughs) I would love to hear that chorus. Because you're probably right. Blinks are powerful. So what's going to alter this energy, any, at all? Well, a couple of things. First of all, Mars will enter Virgo on July 10th. That will definitely shift the energy. In fact, if you want a little less heat in the kitchen, I would say that we could even move that back toward, what, Friday, maybe Saturday, where it starts to approach that line of crossing over into a new sign. And I don't know if this isn't the devil you know is better than the one you don't, because Mars at least is in fire in Leo. It's in Earth, of course, when it crosses into Virgo. And its next step, I mean, just looking a little bit farther down the road when it enters Libra, then it's in detriment. So... Mars is in this, (laughs) poor Mars, send Mars some love. When Mars gets over to Scorpio and then back into Sagittarius, fire, fire, Mars will take a big deep breath or something. (laughs) But right now, Mars is wading through a little bit of a difficult part of the chart. But look at what's happened with Mars moving through fiery Leo. These riots in Europe, France, etc. That's part of this trigger, no doubt. As above, so below. I mean, this is a total reflection of what's going on on Earth. And we have this yod to be with us for the whole month. All right. The other part of this that is also so very clear. We've been talking about it forever, really. And, you know, you try not to bring up too much of the shadow side. But here's Pluto back into the back stretches of Capricorn. 29 degrees now, 32 minutes in retrograde, moving back to almost where it was in the United States chart 247 years ago. And what have we said was going to be the big theme of Pluto when it finally does clean up Capricorn and enter Aquarius for the next 20 years? Don't tell me what to do or challenging structures versus authoritarian control. 
and that's playing out right now. Let's finish up the shadowy side of this with Neptune, and I would just say to that, do you really believe everything you hear from the quote-unquote authorities? All right, now, let's talk about this yod from a powerful sense, because that's some of the shadow. We'll unpack the yod more as the month unfolds, but there's a lot to talk about there, and we'll, of course, compare it to events. But let's talk about, for us, what about the positive side of this? So as this kicks off today, we have this one week of basically Mars in fire Leo before it moves into Virgo. So we have one week under this kind of construct that may be uncomfortable Mars challenges your harmony and balance, Venus, in some kind of way. Something tips, triggers, that causes you to look at something that doesn't serve you anymore. Pluto's transformational work in the last degrees of Capricorn. Remember, it won't be back here in this real estate in the chart for another about 247, 48 years. I mean, take advantage of it. This is a great time to tear down things that don't serve your soul. Welcome it. This is like a cosmic get-out-of-jail-free card. It's like Mars. Here, I'll kick you out. I'll get it going. I'll start the ball. And then with Pluto sitting right there, 29 degrees Capricorn, and today the moon is right on Pluto. So that's saying that you can go inside. It's safe to look in that vault. It's okay to face the demon, if you will, because Neptune can give you the inspiration out. You've got the moon and Neptune in a sextile with each other with super powerful Pluto at the base as well, saying you can do this from within. Don't focus on the point of the witch's hat. Focus on the base. There's a trip line in your life. Mars triggers it. Don't worry about that. Go to the base. The universe is in the business right now of changing structures. It's been going on since Saturn and Pluto conjoined January 12th, 2020. Ah, we're going to do the pandemic first. Okay, go back and look at what happened in the 1300s. War, famine, the bubonic plague, the biggest pandemic of them all. Climate change, it froze in the northern hemisphere for about a decade. And what emerged from that was the Italian Renaissance, the ultimate moth to cocoon to butterfly experience. And here it is again, July 2023, brought in by this yod. So welcome the energy, stay on the positive side, focus on the transformation, and get your inspiration from within, not from what's going on up there at the top of this thing. Don't worry about it, it's just a trigger. It's just to get you to look deeper inside. That's what's going on. Oh, I love you. Big hugs, big hugs, big hugs. See you back tomorrow.